Hey cats, welcome back to the channel. It's Ed, Time Lord Buddy. Today a look at a seductive and treasure-like timepiece, the Garmin Epix 2. Thanks for tuning into the channel guys, it's always appreciated. If you're yet to do so, hit that subscribe button, but also click the bell below for notifications when we launch the new videos for you. It also helps us out a turn if you give this video a thumbs up like. Thanking you. Over the last few weeks I've been testing out the Apix 2 from Garmin. There was an original Apix and they're kind of calling this the Apix but it's certainly a second revision. Garmin have supplied me this watch for review but they're not vetting my video before my valued viewers. Gonna do it in a slightly different way today. I'm gonna tell you about some things I like and some things that Perhaps I don't like about the watch, but I've managed to get over. First up, I have to say I love the vibrant watch face on the Epix 2. I found it to be really visible, even in some very bright conditions that we've had over the last few weeks. The screen size and the visual clarity will no doubt appeal to many runners with the AMO LED Active Matrix Organic Light Emitting Diode display giving us a 1.3 inch always on reference. I've set it to always on when I'm out doing some activities, well pretty much running. During the day I've switched the display so that it only comes on with a gesture just when I'm looking at it basically. I love how I can change the screen so it gives me a whole bunch of different metrics, total mileage, steps, current training progress, all at a single glance. One area that you might love about this watch but I've sacrificed is the touchscreen display. I found that the touchscreen interface here on the Epix 2 is fantastic. There's very little inaccuracy. The touch targets are appropriately sized on screen to minimize any input errors. You can of course use the buttons on the side of the watch to navigate around the menus if you so choose. I have though disabled the touchscreen options just to save a little bit of battery. And I've also found that the touch controls are far too alluring for tech-hungry future runners. The settings and configurability here in the Apex 2 are numerous and mean the watch can be optimised for your intended use, perhaps even if that's going to be quite varied over the course of a week. For example, if you're at home or at work, you could opt for the jacket or max battery mode, thus turning off some of the specific sensors that you just won't be using. Then you can flip back to max accuracy, which will make use of all GPS modes available. Perhaps if you're doing a race or something or a time trial and you want the most accurate setting you can get, that's the one for you. I think the quick selection and the ability to switch between these different modes is absolutely fantastic. Reminds me a little bit of the latest GoPro where you've got some different settings for different like frame rates and resolutions. You can store them as presets and go between them really quickly. That was a real problem in earlier versions of the GoPro. Now you can do it on the fly with the Apix 2. It just really does elevate the watch above some other models. I'm going to talk about metrics a little bit now, which is obviously very important to runners and athletes. You've got your typical body battery scores, which are generated on activity and also sleep. I think stress levels are incorporated into that as well. I did see those stress levels rise a little bit whilst I had the virus a couple of weeks back and they've slowly gone back down. So the watch really did tell me quite a lot about my recovery. Respiration is another element that the Epix will record. That one was also very telling whilst I had the virus. I found that I was breathing a hell of a lot more, perhaps in a more shallow fashion as well. The sheer number of different sports tracking apps that are incorporated into the Garmin Epix 2 is mind-numbing. Extremely diverse from specific settings for trail running to swimming, biking. There's even a load of skiing maps which can be incorporated onto the watch. Even more interesting variations for golf, for example. Indoor climbing, which work very well, through to surfing. One of the more diverse apps that I have actually used on the watch is the Breathwork app. You can use that to help focus and calm your mind and it has a range of different preset sessions to help improve your oxygen intake in terms of rhythm and consistency. I think one of the most useful aspects of the watch that I do use on a daily basis is those day-to-day -day metrics like heart rate, body battery and sleep calculation too. I think the watch almost predicted my positive test for the virus with the odd changes in my heart rate and general fatigue. My resting heart rate was probably up about five or six beats per minute. It's normally 
pretty consistent around about 50 beats a minute. I think the ability to closely monitor sleep as well has helped aid my recovery from the virus. It gave me some really good indications as to where my perceived effort and heart rate have started to return to normal, or at least where they were before. Even just running some easy efforts recently, I found that the heart rate was maybe five to seven beats faster per minute than it would have been before. Those are slowly coming back down now and the watch has helped me to actually check on that. I tend to prefer physical buttons on my devices rather than touch controls, especially when I'm using a device in an active environment, so when I'm running or hiking or something. You've got five buttons on the Epix 2, three on the left side, two on the right. I do like the fact the start-stop control has got a small sleeve around it. It just helps to stop you accidentally activating that control when you don't mean to. Prevention of accidental engagement, I suppose you could call it. As per usual with the Garmin device, charging's dead easy with the proprietary cable. I've been getting some stellar battery life out of the Epix 2 over the last few weeks. You guys know I like listening to music while I'm out on my runs and the Epix 2 caters for that also. Music controls are easily accessed from a long press of the down button as is the menu for a long press of the up and menu control. Dead easy to pair up your wireless headphones to the watch and I found no major issues with operation. The watch face itself is highly configurable and I've managed to shoehorn as much info as I can on there. Altitude and pressure readings that the watch gives out seem to be on point with local stations and measurements. One awesome feature on the watch that I haven't seen before is that of stamina tracking. It's been built into the Garmin OS for the Phoenix 7 and the Epix 2 from January. This gives you a stamina percentage and a potential percentage over the course of your run. Obviously, the harder and the faster that you run, the faster that percentage starts to fall. It also gives you your current pace. So I guess if you were racing, you know exactly what pace you can run at for a certain distance. Maybe you need to leave a little bit for the end. Perhaps if you're doing a marathon or something over that, could be a really useful function. Maybe if you're doing a race where careful control of energy is key, perhaps doing an ultra, for example, that feature could be make or break for you. Could be a real boon. I configured my stamina data screen so it has a total distance left based on how much you've run, the actual speed you've run, kind of like a stamina distance meter i suppose it's a little bit like in the car you know it will tell you how many miles you've got left based on the fuel you've got i really like that idea it certainly helped me to progress towards some of my half marathon and 10k goals recently rounding off the review now there are a couple of issues i do have with the watch but i've managed to negate those to almost push them to the side completely by switching the screen display to only come on via gesture the watch battery life is greatly improved by several days. Quite a big screen here, so obviously that's going to eat up a lot of juice. Last thing people want to be doing is charging their watch every two, three days. Here I've managed to extend it out to over a good week or so. Bear in mind that I'm running most days. I think that's pretty decent battery life really for a watch that's got such a powerful visual screen. I think that's given me a really good balance between superb GPS accuracy, loads of metrics, but only when I'm actually looking at the watch. Careful positioning of the Epix 2 seemed to be the answer to a more accurate wrist-based heart rate reading. You guys know I've got quite bony wrists. So I never seem to get brilliant readings from watches, although the last few that I've tested out have been significantly better than some of the earlier ones. Epix 2 certainly seems to be a little bit better, the top of the tree really, when it comes to wrist-based heart rate accuracy. It's only very cold morning temperatures I found some odd, very high readings before things start to stay stabilize once you get a half a mile in. I do use the Polar OH1 Plus heart rate strap on my upper arm. But it's quite nice sometimes just to be able to go out without that, especially if you're just running two, three miles or something. Don't have to faff around with more gear and get it all connected up and charged. So no major real issues with the heart rate there. Yeah, wrist base never going to be as accurate perhaps as a chest strap, but it's just less worry, less hassle. All in all, a more considerable watch here for those runners after a premium experience. If you're just looking to get something just to track, you know, running three, four miles here and there, it's probably not the watch for you. This thing's chock full of functions and features. I've just scratched the surface on it, really. Talking of scratch the surface, this thing's built like a tank. Overall build of the watch, no doubt, will be the main attraction here for some people. Very hard wearing housing with a bezel of titanium. I mean, the screen itself just looks like it did when it came out of the box. Amazing. 
no durability issues whatsoever thus far. A top of the list watch, certainly a very premium product though for the metric hungry runners out there. Probably about the ideal size on wrist for me. It doesn't feel too bulky, but an absolute rock in terms of durability and accuracy in my testing so far. Did you guys pick up the Epix 2? What are your thoughts and opinions on it so far? Let me know down in the comments. A quick musical interlude for you. One of my favourite albums from Jonathan Richmond and the Modern Lovers has got to be Modern Lovers 88. I think it was called that because it was released in 1988. Maybe they just couldn't come with a better title. It kicks off with the fantastic Dancing Late at Night, which sees all the best bits of Jonathan Richmond, the Modern Lovers, put together. Rock and roll guitar rhythms, fantastic vocal performances, and really subtle backing vocals. The guitars just sound fantastic as well because they got room to swim around him. There's far too many tracks out there where they try and pile too much in. Here it's just the bare bones and that's all you need. Circle Eye as well is another track of a similar vein. Seems to be talking about some sort of farm where they got potatoes or something. I'm not entirely sure but it's the only rock and roll track I know that talks about potatoes. For me though, track 10 which is I Have Come Out To Play is the one that really gets me. Jonathan's sort of talking about almost this childish figure perhaps it's himself i'm not sure and he doesn't want to eat his dinner he just wants to get out there and play you know on his bicycle squirting his water pistol what people kind of reminds me of me really I've got all these responsibilities and things but i don't want to lose the childish bit of me that craves the excitement and the adrenaline you know the running the playing of the guitar and the music and the football and the basketball and all the things that make you smile make you excited Get that feeling deep inside of absolute joy, I suppose. An absolute cracker of an album. Jonathan Richmond and the Modern Lovers with Modern Lovers 88. Thanks for dropping by and spending some time with me here on the channel. Hope you've enjoyed the review today. Please comment below as to how you monitor your runs. How do you store them and track them? Do you do it via a smartwatch? Have you got some sort of activity tracker? Or do you just use a phone? Perhaps some of you use a stopwatch and a pen and paper. Let me know in the comments below. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications. Don't forget also to give this video a thumbs up, like, and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Budd, and I'll be seeing you.